you can also upload your own data into ArcGIS Online. This may be my favorite capability of all of ArcGIS Online. Let's begin by uploading a simple CSV, comma separated value, file containing cities and states. Let me show you my CSV file. City, state. In this case, it's the radio stations that broadcast the games of the Kansas City Royals. Let's say I want to look at the pattern of those cities. I'm going to show you the file inside my computer here. So there's my file, royalsstations.csv. Let's go ahead and open up a map, and I've got the blank or the light gray canvas map as my base map, so I can really see the pattern of these once I map them. And then I'm going to drag this file over to my map. And it says, oh, OK, do you have latitude, longitude, or address? I've got addresses here, even though they're just cities and states. And I can see that uh, it's correctly identifying the fact that city is my city field and state is my state field. So go ahead and add layer. And it's geocoding now all of those locations of the radio stations. And there is the pattern. Excellent. So this is the pattern of radio stations. Now if I want to find Kansas City, I'm adding a big push pin there. Uh, maybe a circle is better. And maybe oversize the thing. My objective is to see that in relationship to my radio stations. And now I can see that there, it does make sense that these stations even this one way up here in South Dakota are sort of a, a cluster. And if I was able to maybe, oh gosh, look, I can draw a freehand area. Listener area. Super. And then I might be able to do the same thing with the St. Louis Cardinals and see how much of Missouri is divided up. Or what about these folks over here? Maybe they listen to the Twins, and maybe these folks in Western and Central Colorado listen to the Colorado Rockies, or watch them on the web, or whatever. So I've demonstrated that we have added a CSV file quite easily into ArcGIS Online. Now let's demonstrate something else that you can map. In this case, how about a GPX file that I saved from my smartphone? In this case, from the Motion X GPS iPhone app. So I'm going to go ahead and add, and this time, add layer from file. The file is on my own computer. And it's over here, oh gosh, Joseph's hard drive. No problem. Add a GPS file that I collected while I was on a certain hike. How about this one? Here's a GPX file right here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and open that, import layer, and great, there it is, all mapped out. Now let's change the base map so we can see a nice, uh, how about a aerial, OK. Now I'm going to change my layer here, and so that my points are mapped as, how about elevation? We want them to be mapped on elevation. That's one of the attributes that my, eh, I don't like that whitish for the, for the lowest uh, elevation. I'm going to make it really visible and make it yellow. OK, apply. And now I can see that I started hiking right here at this cul-de-sac. I walked up this road and on this trail and then to the top of the ridge and then down this down this trail and then across these ravines and then I was at the lowest point right here as you can see and then back up to the ridge and then back to the vehicle. So that was my hike from my smartphone collecting with a app called the Motion X GPS. Now conversely if I was on the Android I could use my tracks and there are lots more apps like this but the point is, is that you can get a GPX file and then just simply drag that over to your session inside ArcGIS Online and then of course you've got all these wonderful base maps that you can change it to and then you've got a, uh, a trace of your field work. Wonderful. So these are just two 
Examples. Think about your students' data of occurrences of litter, locations of historical buildings, water quality along a stream reach, and so on. It can all be mapped, but you don't want to just map things because you can. You want to do it so that you can then analyze the spatial patterns.